So we know ratios compare to numbers, and we know proportions compare to ratios, but percents mean per 100. And so when we see 7%, we can change it to a decimal by moving the decimal point on 7 two places to the left to get 0.07. Now, 0.07, we can say as 7 one hundredths or 7 over 100, because that's what percent means. If you had a 7% in a class, that means that if you were given 100 questions, you would be able to get 7 of them right. Not very good. This is the percent proportion. Percent over 100 is equal to part, and usually the word is goes with the word part, and whole is on the bottom, and usually the word of goes with that. So let's do some mental percents here. Let's say we want to find 1% of 800. Well, what we have to do to find 1% of something is take the decimal point on 800, which is at the end, and we're going to move it twice to the left. So 1% of 800 is actually just 8. What if we wanted to find 10% of 800? Well, what I could do is, now that I know that 1% of 800 is 8, I could take 10 of those, or I could just take 800 and move the decimal point one time to the left and get 80. How about 100% of 800? Well, for this, we don't have to do anything. It's just 800. 100% is the whole thing. Okay, now knowing those facts here, let's say we wanted to do this. We wanted to find 7% of 800. Well, since 1% of 800 is 8, I could have 7 of those. And so, basically, I could just do 7 times 8 and get 56. So some percents you can do mentally, and you can do them very, very quickly as well. So let's try this one. What is 50% of 64? Okay. So, what is 50% of 64? Well, 50% of 64 is half of 64, which is 32. So, another way we can think of this is, what if we use the percent proportion for the first time? To do this, we know that 50 is the percent, so 50 out of 100 is one ratio. Now it says of 64, so that means 64 goes on the bottom because it's the whole like we talked about up here. And X is the part because, well, we don't know what the part is. Now we learned last time how to, how to do these, and all you need to do now is cross multiply and solve the percent proportion excuse me and you get x to be equal to 32 but that one we could kind of check mentally but how about this one what percent is 10 of 500 All right, well, I don't know the percent this time, so it's going to be X over 100. And it does say is 10, and is is our part. 10 of 500, that's the whole. Now, last problem, it said what is 50%. Well, that was the percent, so don't get confused with the is part with that. It says is 10. 10 is not a percent. So it can't go over a 100. 
So once again, we work our proportion magic. We cross multiply, and we get 2%, like milk. We want to make sure we put the percent sign on there as well. All right, one more situation that can happen, and that's this. Five is 10% of what number? All right, what do we know? We know the percent. That's the easiest part to find. 10 out of 100. Okay, let's read what else we've got. Of what number? I don't know. That means that's the whole. That means 5 is the part. And so what I can do is I can solve it from there. I can come down, cross multiply again. That's a nifty tool. And I get x is equal to 50. So far, so good. So that takes us through how to use the percent proportion. And, you know, we'll, we'll use it from time to time, but... Let's look at this situation. It says a pair of pants originally cost $30, and the new price is $24. We want to find this. We would love to be able to find this percent of change, meaning how much did it go up, how much did it go down. So the first thing we're going to have to do is find the amount of change. So here's what we do. If we were to take... 30 minus 24, that gives us 6. That's the amount of change. Now, if we want to find a percent of change, here's what we can do. If we were to take the amount of change and divide it by the original, such as, 6 divided by 30. And if we divided that, that would give us 0.2, which if we change that 2%, that would be 20%. That's probably the easiest way for me to figure out the percent of change. Now, another way you can do it is, you know, you can set up a percent proportion for this as well. You're trying to find the percent of change, so that's x over 100. The change was 6. The original was 30. So 6 is my part. I'll cross multiply. The difference in this method is I'm not going to have to move a decimal point. It's going to give me 20% right away. Now one of the best examples of using percent is you personally as a consumer in this world. Let's say we've got a flash drive that costs $9 and it's on sale for 20% off. The sales tax is 8%. And what's the total cost of the flash drive with the tax? Okay. So we're going to calculate this out and I'm going to show you how without using the, the proportions. Now you can use the proportions if you want. Something like this. It's just better to calculate it go from there. So the first thing we got to do is we got to find what's known as the discount. That's how much we're taking off. And so to do that, we're going to take 9 times 20%. Now your calculator might have a percent key, and if it does, you can just hit 9 times 20, hit the percent key, and you're done. But you might have to change 20% to a decimal. So let's do that. So that would be 0.2. And that tells us that the discount is a dollar eighty discount. All right, now we gotta find our new price. So if we take the cost or the price it was minus the discount of a dollar eighty, that tells us that the sale price is seven dollars and twenty cents. What a deal! But we got to pay tax. So now we're going to take 720 times 8%. 8% is 
8. Every place you go has a different sales tax, whether you're in Liberty, Kansas City, wherever. So sometimes we have to round when we do this. So we'll round to the nearest cent. That's two decimal places. That gives us 0.576, but ah, that's not in the right form. So that's just 58 cents. That's the tax. So now what we're going to do next is we are going to add a couple things together. And namely, we got to add on the sale price, 720, I'll circle it. And the tax are 58 cents. That's, a, that's something else you have to pay. So our final amount that we have to pay is $7.78. I want you to try one of these because it's very important that you can do this. And so here's your situation, and then pause the video, try it, and see if you match up as well. So we've got this shirt, and the cost of the shirt is $15. It's on sale. It's a 25% off sale. And then tax is 9%. Pause the video, go ahead and see if you can figure this out, and I'll be back with you shortly. All right, I'm back. This is the steps that we use to get there. We take 15 times 0.25, or 15 times 25%, that's 375. So the sale price, once we take that discount off, is 11 and a quarter. We then take 11 and a quarter times 0 0.09, that's the sales tax, which rounds to $1.01. And 1226, that's our final answer. Percents, you use them all the time. They're a part of your everyday life, and you need to know how to compute them. See you next time. Thanks for watching.